Hey, it's Martin, and I'm here with uh, Marcus Ramos at P1 Raceway. Today, we're going to show you how to build a flexi chassis brushless slot car. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and prep the chassis. And how we do that is go ahead and pull the gear and the tires out of the way. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to grind this area right here, this area right here, and this area right here for the motor mount. There's also a small place right here that we're going to have to grind to get the coating off for a diagonal bracket. This is the motor bracket we're going to use. And the motor bracket is going to fit in here just like this. It'll be flush on the end right here, go just above the little lip and right across the front. And so we're going to have to grind this area right here and then flip it over and grind a little place here. This right here is so that you can get enough solder in there and have it attached to the frame solid. And this is for that diagonal brace that I told you was going to go here. So we'll go ahead and start grinding. <laughs> Now that all the grinding is done, we're going to go ahead and start with the acid flux to pre-tin all our components that we're going to uh, solder together. Like this. So that way the solder will flow out evenly. I like to use the rosin core solder. Just go ahead and put a little bit on the, the end of the uh, tip here and just lay it on there and start smoothing it out and let it run from one end to the other, just like that. And so now we have a pre tinned motor mount. And then we'll put a little solder here on the frame. And I can tell you from experience that uh, grinding this is absolutely important because uh, otherwise you'll never get solder to stick to it. I don't know if they put a zinc coating or something on it, but solder does not stick well. As you can see, the solder where I ground it, put the uh, acid flux, is flowing out really well. So we'll flip it up and catch the edge of the motor mount right here. It's looking good so far. Alright, next we're going to go ahead and get the motor mount set up so we can solder it in place. Here I like to use a huge pair of hemostats. Basically, uh, it'll hold the, uh, hold the motor mount straight, uh, about a 90 degree. We'll have to adjust it a little bit uh, by eyesight just to make sure that it's in there. But you push it in close to the, uh, the little lip that's on the frame right here. And then once that's in place, you know you're pretty well straight. And then the, the handles on the bottom of the uh, hemostats will hold it kind of level. So it's better than nothing. Take a little drop of uh, uh, acid flux right there, put it just along this edge, and we're going to tack the front edge first, so that way we can take the hemostats off. Does a pretty good job. So we'll put a little solder on there, and it flows right in. Let 
let that cool off just for a second. Let's go ahead and take the hemostats off. As you can see, it flowed out pretty easy on both sides right there. And we're going to take another drop of acid, put it on the back right here on both sides so we can get it to flow through nice. Just make sure that this area right here is pretty well flush because that'll be important in just a minute when we flip the chassis over. So again, put a little, little solder right on the end of the tip. Lay it right against there, watch it flow in. Does a really good job, kind of heat it up, let it flow on the other side. And now you've got your front and your back of your motor route tacked in place. At this point, I like to look at it from the back side right here and kind of make sure you can see it's tilted in just a little bit. Well, this is the best time to go ahead and flex that over. So I take my hemostats and kind of tilt the motor bracket just a little bit. That's all it took. That looks pretty well straight. So now we're going to flip the chassis over and then you'll see this little groove right here. This little groove where the uh, motor bracket meets right up with the chassis. And I go ahead and lay a little acid right here uh, in this section because we're going to cause solder to flow all the way down in between that and come out the other side. It does a really good job. So here we'll add just a little, a little solder. We'll go ahead and lay it in there just like that. It does a really good job of laying it in there. Almost looks like a TIG weld. So we laid it all the way in there. Looks good. Then we flip it over and we see the penetration came all the way out the other side. So here we go. Just kind of let it flow back in. Now the motor bracket is still straight and it's soldered on all its points. The next part of the build is going to be a diagonal brace, and we're going to put a diagonal brace from this point on the motor bracket to right here on the chassis. The reason we're doing this is because most CAN motors, you solder along the two sides. The brushless motors don't require that, so what we're going to do is we're going to add an additional brace from the top of the motor down to the chassis so that it doesn't flex back and forth going through the corners. As with the other metals, I like to grind just the little edge right here first and then pre-tin this. Obviously this is pre-tin, then I'll pre-tin the top edge of the motor bracket. And I'll show you how I do that. As with the other components, we're going to put just a little bit of acid right on the end of the piece of wire right there. Put just a little dab of solder right here. We're going to pretend the end of this the rod so that way when we put it against the motor mount, we already have something to attach it to. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend my top edge of my motor mount right here. Like so. This is where it gets tricky. We're going to pass the, uh, the support bracket through the bottom of the chassis just like this and we're going to attach it directly to the top of the motor mount bracket like this. And since we already have the solder on there and both ends are pre tinned it should attach pretty easily. So all I do is put a little blob of solder on there and there it's in place. We'll let that cool off for a minute. Now that it's cooled off, it gets a little tricky because now we have to flip the chassis over like this. And now we're going to have to cut this rod right here so that it lays perfectly in the chassis. I'll show you how I do it. Now that the diagonal rod is pushed through there, you can see how it almost touches. So we're going to bend it up just a little bit to make sure that it makes contact with the frame itself. Then you can see how it touches right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little dot of acid flux right here, like so. 
a little blob of solder on our tip. Lay it right in there, just like that. Now you have the diagonal brace from the motor bracket to the frame just like that with plenty of support. The next part of the build is we need to make sure that the, uh, the uh, bushing supports didn't move because sometimes the heat can cause them to move while we're putting the uh, other parts together. There's a little bit of binding right there, but that could be because they're warm. If you feel any binding right here, it's been my experience that you can just heat up the area around the bushings, soften the solder a bit, and it'll correct itself. Much better. Next, we're gonna take the ESC, which is right here. And what we're gonna do is we have to insulate it. You can see that there's contacts on the bottom right here that obviously can't come in contact with the steel frame. So I prefer the clear 3M double-sided tape. Works really well. And what I do is stick it directly on the bottom of the uh, ESC, like this. Smush it down flat. Take some tiny scissors and trim off the extra two-sided tape that you're not going to need. I'm sure you can use other types of two-sided tape, but this is my preference. I've never had any issues out of it. It holds really well. It's a little more pricey, but it's definitely good stuff. So next we're going to peel the backing off of the double-sided tape, like so. And we're going to stick the uh, positive and negative terminals all the way to the front. So I pick up the wires right here and stick them up. And it just so happens this chassis is the perfect size to lay this ESC in. Give it just a little firm push right here, and you can see the chassis still retains all of its movement with no contact. Now that the ESC is mounted, we're going to go ahead and pre-tin all the pads. And the pads are where you're going to make the, uh, the connections for all your electrical connections. So on the right side, we've got the positive for the track voltage. The left is the negative for the track voltage. And the three pads along the back are going to be for the uh, brushless motor contacts. So just go ahead and pretend those. You don't want to spend a whole lot of time on there and overheat them because you can actually delaminate these if you uh, give it too much heat. So I spend as little time as possible and I'll show you why in a minute. So these are all pretend. So I'm going to go ahead and strip these wires. This is a, a high-grade silicone wire with, or silicone-coated uh, wire. So you can pretty much pinch, pinch it with your fingernails and pull the ends right off of it, just like that. Let's give it a little twist. We're going to go ahead and pretend the ends of these wires as well, right here away from the ESC. If you're not comfortable and you're afraid you're going to put, uh, put a drop of uh, solder right on the board, then just lay something over the board. So these are pretend. And how I've done all the other cars that I've built is I take these and I loop them around so that in the case that the guide flag gets pulled really hard or if you run into a situation where your guide flag or your guide flag wire comes loose and it's because it's broken and you have to replace it, then all you have to do is just pull a little slack out of here. So I bend them around just like this and I'll stick just a little solder on the tip like so. Bend it in a U-shape, lay it on top of the pad, and then hit it just like that. And there it is melted together.
We'll do the same on the other side. Now your power wires for your ESC are in place. You can actually pull a little slack out of them if you want. You can make your little hoops a little bigger right here. And next, we'll go ahead and attach the motor. So the motor we're gonna to use today is a KC Racing 4500 KV 1106. And it comes with four screws. We're only gonna end up using two of these because the motor bracket only accommodates two. So we're gonna go ahead and install that now. You'll notice that I'm installing the motor with the wires pointed up. The reason you wanna do that is because flexing the wires where they go into the motor, uh, if you push on them too hard, it's possible that you can pull one of the wires out of So I just want to snug that up just a little bit like this. And obviously the, the lower one goes in its lower position. Sure is nice to have a bolt-in motor. So just snug it up just a little bit right now. And there's the motor mounted into the bracket. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and braid these wires. Uh, it's not necessary, but it makes the install a little bit neater. Just keep the center wire in the center, and then you just cross the wires like this, and then flip them under, pull the straight wire up, and then cross them, and lay the wires down in between them again, cross them, and then pull it up between the two, and then cross them, and then push it down between them, and then cross them, like so. Just makes a little neater install. Now that I've got the wires braided, uh, I'm going to pull them down close to the ESC and see how close we are. Normally I'll give it just a little slack, maybe maybe a quarter to three-eighths of an inch past, uh, past the end. And what I'll do is just snip these wires off in this area right here. There's no reason to have extra wire in here that you don't need. So I just snip them right off. And again, this is high quality siliconized wire. So what I'm gonna do is pinch the ends and pull the ends, uh, pull the silicone right off the end so that you can expose the wire. And then we'll pretend those. Now that we've got the wires pre-tinned, we're gonna go ahead and attach them to the back of the ESC where the brushless motor attaches. Now, I know it looks intimidating that there's three wires, but it really doesn't matter. If you put them on and the motor doesn't spin the right direction, you just reverse two of the wires. Just put a touch of solder like that. When it comes to soldering on one of these circuit boards, less is more. The pre-tinning allows you to put the minimum amount of solder on there without uh, flowing it out into the circuit board. So one left to go. And there we go. Our brushless motor is now attached to the ESC. To check the motor direction, I like to use a 9-volt battery. I'll pull the braids down just a little bit so they clear the guide flag. 
and make sure the positive is on the positive side, negative is on the negative, and let's see. Oh, we can hear it spinning. Let's see what direction. Hey, it's going the right direction the first time. Your motor should be spinning toward the axle. Now that we're done with the final assembly, I'm going to send it over to Marcus. He's going to go ahead and, and use the, uh, the adhesive to glue the gear on right there. We've got an 1137 gear ratio, and uh, that's going to, it's going to pretty much complete my part of the build. So here we have Marcus. He's going to put a drop of, uh, I guess it's, uh, what is that, Marcus? Loctite, 680. So he's going to put a drop of that inside the pinion, put it on the shaft, and then he's going to apply power to it to make sure that we didn't get any glue inside the teeth. There we go. If there was any glue, it would have slung out. Now that the gears had time to set up, Marcus is gonna slide the axle back in there and set the gear lash. There we go. Yeah. Okay, let me see if this tire is going to work. I've changed the tire. I'm actually going to let it.